Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yes, the Lord. Indeed, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. One more day. Amen. Yes. God has been good to us. Yes. Can I repeat that one more time? I said, God has been good to us. Yes. I don't know about you, but the longer I live, the more I have learned to appreciate the goodness yes, of the sir. Lord. Hello, somebody. Amen. Because I realize that it is because of the grace of Almighty God why I'm still here. Yes, he didn't have to spare my life and blesses me with so many years on planet Earth. Yes, sir. That's true. And so with that in mind, I pause long enough. Amen. And may I encourage you tonight to bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To lift his name on high. Yes. I'm reminded of this, the words of the psalmist that declares that from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord mm -hmm. is worthy to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. The Won't Lord. you take 30 seconds and help me exalt yes. him this evening? Yes. Help me lift up his name and magnify him. He is worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. Let us remind him how awesome a God he is, how wonderful, how glorious a God he is. <laughs> and so we come tonight to bless his name. We come tonight to magnify and to glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, the King of glory. The great I am, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's an awesome God, somebody. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that praise is coming for the upright. And so we come to worship Him. We come to magnify Him. Oh, bless the Lord with me, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify your name tonight, mighty God. We lift your name on high. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. Your name is excellent. Your name is holy. Your name is wonderful. King of kings and Lord of lords. And so we exalt and bless your great name. Mighty God, tonight as we come to study your words together, God, your people are hungry. And here is your man servant tonight, mighty God. One more time, I pray that you will touch your son afresh from the crown of my head down to the soles of my feet. I pray, God Almighty, that you'll, you'll give me revelatory insight into your word tonight. That as I teach your people, God, that the people of God will be edified, will be blessed, and will be encouraged in the things of the Lord. Have your way in our midst tonight, mighty God. As we place everything into your hands. Bless your people tonight, mighty God. Those who are in the house in vision of host church, vision of Hope Church of God, those of us who are in the house tonight, mighty God, and those who are viewing online, mighty God, I pray that you'll bless your people, mighty God. Let the anointing flow in the house, mighty God, and through social media, mighty God, through media platform, mighty God, that whosoever listen to study tonight will experience the anointing and sense the presence and the glory of God wherever they are. Bless us now, we pray, as we commit everything into your hands, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and then the people of God declares amen, amen and amen. amen let me just use this opportunity again to welcome everyone to vision of hope church of God those of you who are in the house with me tonight it is indeed a delight and an honor to have you in vision of hope church of God faithful and committed to study the word of Almighty God together and, and, and for those who are not able to make it but you have tuned in online I want to let you know tonight that I appreciate you taking the time out to share in this study with us. And I pray that the word will be a source of blessing and a source of encouragement. And as always, let me ask you to help us to increase our presence, our online presence, by like and share, host the watch party, and tell others that Vision of Hope Church of God is live. And we're going to dive right into the word and tonight, amen, somebody? Amen. I needed some extra material um, tonight. As always, uh, let us recap from last week, um, few, from the week before last Friday. We celebrated Good Friday, and what a time we had 
in our Good Friday service. What a blessing it was. If you missed it, you certainly missed something. And you can always go back, go to our YouTube channel and you can see it there. Or you can go to um, Facebook, go to our um, Facebook page and scroll to past programs. And you can also find it that way as well too. But we had a great time um, in the Lord. So let us, the last time we were here then, and it would have been back on March 26, somewhere in that neighborhood for Bible study. <coughs> Excuse me. And so some of the things we, we spoke about, um, we, we, we chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, the scene um, shifted, the scene um, shifted from earth to heaven. Remember um, the, the last time I taught the book of Revelation, uh, we used the, 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 the illustration or the metaphor of a theme park to help us to better get a grasp of what is going on. I believe that's a good concept. I'm going to go back to it again and use it to help us. For those of us, many of us have gone to theme parks and so we know the idea and concept and what goes on in, in those theme parks. So I want to use that concept to help you to grasp better the book of Revelation. So chapter 4, chapter 4, chapter 4, we are now no longer on earth. The theme, uh, the scene has now switched to heaven. Are you still here with me? Amen. So just to kind of get us back and track. In verse number 1 he said, After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Verse number 2 real quickly. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So this, the, the, um, the, the, the scene has shifted now from earth to heaven. You remember chapter 1, 2, and 3, the apostle um, was there at the Isle of Patmos, and he, and he had this vision of the Lord of glory, and the Lord gave him the instruction for uh, the seven uh, letters um, to the churches. All of that took place on earth. Are you still here with me? Yes. Now the apostle has taken a trip. Uh, and, 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 and John, listen to me and hear me well. John was supernaturally um, transported to heaven. Hello, somebody. Amen. John was supernaturally transported to heaven. I love how Dr. MacArthur puts it in his commentary. He said the Apostle Paul was not sleeping and he was not having a dream or anything of that nature. So in other words, in other words, in other words, what happened is that John physically here, John physically here, but his inner man, his spirit man, combined with the Holy Spirit, was transported into glory. And watch this now. The, the part of John which was transported to heaven, to glory, could see and react and do all things because that's him. The, the part of us here, this that you can slap and feel some pain, this is literally a housing, a tent, or a shell. The real me and the real you live inside of this housing or this tent. Are you still here with me? Amen. That's why the Bible speaks about that um, our tent has been dissolved and it's been destroyed. Yes. And if you don't believe me, take a look in the mirror. You will discover real quickly that you don't look the way you used to look 10 years ago. Hello, somebody. Are you still here? Some people are upset with the mirror, but you can't upset with the mirror. You got to upset with the process of time because you just can't do anything about it. You, uh, let's put it this way. You can't do a whole lot about it. You can use all the age-defined serum as much as you want. But when you put it around your face, these places start to show the age. You're not talking back to me here. So, so this year is not going to go. So John was supernaturally um, transported to heaven. 
Watch this. The Bible didn't say it and John didn't say it. Mm -hmm. But I believe that literally John was dead. His physical man was dead because his inner man has gone somewhere else for a while. Are you still here with me? Yeah. I, listen, listen. If you're a student of the Bible, what you will find, you, you, you'll find, watch this now, watch this, watch this. There are a few people in the Bible who has a similar experience like John. And there are some others in the Bible who have some unique experiences. And I'm coming back. And that's all we can we can probably just set the foundation so when we start run, we just run full speed ahead. Is that alright? Yes. So watch this now. In the book of Acts, the Bible said that Philip was carried. Right? You want to know what that means? It means that somehow, supernaturally, the Holy Ghost picked up Philip physically and take him from one geographical location to another and put him down. Yes. I don't know how it happened, yes. but it happened. Yes. Because when Philip catch up with the eunuch, mm -hmm. it wasn't Philip's spirit or Philip Duppy, if you will, excuse the expression, yes. but it wasn't Philip's spirit yes. that was talking to the eunuch mm -hmm. in the chariot. It was Philip was talking to him. Yes. But how did Philip got there? It was that, you notice the Bible said um, the, 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 the spirit carried him. So in other words, he was lifted up. When you go to Ezekiel uh, or, or Jeremiah in the, in the Valley of Dry Bone, again, that's a different encounter you're going to find here because sometimes the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and will literally um, enlighten or open your spirit so that your spirit can go to a place and see an experience where you are still here. There's no separation. But in all indication here, if you look at verse number 2 of, of, of the text now, it says here, and immediately I was in what? In the spirit. So in other words, John was saying, after the voice said, come up, reverend. After the voice said, come up. What did he say afterward? He said, immediately I was up. Yes. Hello, somebody. He didn't bother to tell us how he got up there or if anything was left behind. Are you still here with me? Yes, Are you still here? Watch this. Story. The next person who had similar experience was the Apostle Paul. Like John here, he had an experience. If you notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he said, I know a man who was caught up into what? Third heaven. And listen to his word. He said, I don't know if it was in the body are out of the body. All I know that this man was caught up in the third heaven. Paul, I want to believe, have an inclination that that encounter wasn't in the body. Are you here with me, somebody? Are you here with me? So, he said, I don't know. So, this is a similar experience that John had, but John's emphasis was not about himself. John's emphasis was about what Christ was saying to the church. That's, that's part of the reason. I believe why he did not put much emphasis on how this took place. But the Bible said he was, he was, he was, he was supernaturally transported to heaven. We talk about the apostle um, had the same encounter. And then afterwards, now he said, watch this now, he said now, and we can probably just keep on going. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Okay. So it says now, um, the appearance of the one who sat upon the throne. Verse number three said, and he that sat, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a um, sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about um, about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. So, basically what John is doing here, if he was not describing the throne, are you, you get that? He was describing who was seated on, uh, or who was, uh, yeah, who was seated up on the throne. And so he gave you a description of, um, of who, and he says what? He says here, he that sat up to look upon was like a jasper. And if I can find what the jasper, what color the jasper is, I'll tell you in a second. Um, which other color is a jasper, y'all know? 
Okay, let me see here. All right. Okay, so so the jasper here that um that John described here, and I'm and so I'm using some of Dr. McCarter's um it's a jasper. John John um later described this stone as a crystal clear, probably referring referring to a diamond which refracts the, the the colors of the spectrum in wondrous um brilliance. So um John described and Ezekiel I believe also described um the same appearance of um of the Lord of glory um seated on the throne. So he described him here says that um to look up and he was like a jasper and a um sardine stone and there was a um rainbow about the throne in the sight of um and i believe if my notes serve me correctly here um ezekiel ezekiel chapter one ezekiel chapter one and verse number 28 tells us it says um like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day so was the radiance around him referring to a vision similar to, to john Darrow. he said this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the lord when i saw it i fell down and i heard the voice of one speaking so again ezekiel chapter one gives you uh, saw a similar vision of the lord of heaven one of the amazing thing about the lord of heaven is that he can appear to you and he can give you just about any form under god's heaven hello somebody he so so he doesn't necessarily is going to appear in the same form every single time remember now we're talking about one and the same and the mount of transfiguration what did they say he transfigured and it's like he, he just turned bright his light or his glory outshines the sun and you hear so that's one appearance again he appears to um the apostle paul and the damascus road different appearance and um so on and so forth. And we're going to come back um, to that in a second. So it says here that around the throne was a rainbow-like symbol. And again, watch this now. And here's what we need to understand. Here's what we need to understand. This aspect of the vision so far of what John has seen so far. Are you still here? Stay with me. This aspect of what John was seeing so far as vision is still pertaining to time. Still pertaining to time. Some of these things here that, that, that John described, when we get to heaven, we're not going to see some of them. Why? Because at some aspect, when time is no more, there is no need for God to manifest himself in a certain way to help us to comprehend who he is. Are you still here? So the Bible said that we shall know him and we shall be known fully uh, and so on. So when we have that knowledge, some of the symbols that we see here, we won't see them anymore because there won't be any need for them. Are you still with me? So it says here, so, uh, okay, so John said he saw a rainbow um, um, circling the, 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 the throne or around the throne. What does this uh, rainbow represent? The first time we saw a rainbow on earth was back um, in, um, in Genesis, what is it? Whatever chapter that is with Noah, um, God said, okay, I'm going to give you this as a sign. I submit to you that it was the same rainbow that John saw, that Noah saw. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I, just, I just messed up somebody thinking. I saw Reverend look upon with a strange look at her face. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, listen, listen. Here, here's something that we got to understand. There is nothing new under heaven. Hello, somebody. Amen. And everything in heaven is already exists. Are you still here? Yes. Let me let me let me let me confuse us tonight and those watching. The Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14, I'll go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. 
And, and I, I, I hear a lot of preachers preach it and say, the Lord going to prepare a place for you. May I submit to you that it's already been prepared. But in order for us to understand the Bible uses language and vernaculars that you and I can relate to. So if I tell you that um, I'm going somewhere to fix up this thing here and when I'm done, I'll call you, I'll come and get you. Guess what's going to happen now? Here's what's going to happen. Our logical mind is going to be able to put a reference to it, a frame of reference and okay, he's going to fix this and this might take him two months or three months so my anticipated weight give and take is going to be two months or let's say two to six are you still here with me you're still here so i go to prepare a place and come back to you so it gives you an idea of a, of a, of a, a, a reference frame of reference in terms of time now we can quantify it and say it's six months or it's ten years, but we have an idea that within a certain period of time he's going to come back. So he didn't leave it um, timelessness and say he didn't say I'm going, and if you see me again, good luck for you. I'm going, and I'm going to prepare preparation. I take what time? You get it? You and I are living in what? Time. God is living in eternity, right? right? He don't need the time. So the, the, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Preparation takes time. Uh, and we communicate via time, present, past, and future. Are you still here? So, so, so watch this now. Let me go back to the rainbow now. Can reference still want to hear about the rainbow? So watch this now. The rainbow now that, that, that John saw here in heaven around the throne was the same rainbow that Noah saw back then, back then in Genesis. How could you arrive at that preacher? All God has to do was to open Noah's eyes or roll back heaven and just cause just the rainbow to manifest. Are you still here? So he now we know what causes rainbow, at least from a scientific point of view. But I believe that what happened is that God just simply rolled back heaven and just caused the rainbow to be revealed. Why? Because God is saying, I am faithful. So the rainbow signifies God's faithfulness. So watch this out. What's the importance? Yes, you might say it's for beauty. It's for beauty. Yes, you might come and say it's, it, it, it's part of God's decor, how he, he, he decors heaven. But watch this now. Remember again, the rainbow was given to us and God said, as long as you see this here, it is a remembrance to me that I will I never again destroy the earth with flood. Correct? So you and I, with that promise, we can go to bed knowing that some people might die from a flood, but the whole world will never be destroyed from a flood because God said, so he saw the rainbow representing the faithfulness of God. Are you still here? Yes. Interrupt me if you have questions, if you will. And if you get questions online, please tell me what the questions are so we can answer them. Praise be to God. Where are we? Okay. All right. Verse number four. And round about the throne were... Uh, four and twenty seats, and up on the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Let me say this before I go any further. Um, I love to give you points when I'm teaching, but here is here is something interesting. The way how, at least up to this point here, Revelation is set up right now, it is difficult to give you points. So if there's a point that catches you, you make your own point so far. Are we good? At least for now. But trust me, I love to give you points um, so you can reference. But at this point here, you just have to take some teaching. And if you can catch your own point from what I've said, then that's fine. Because it's hard. Believe me, I sat down between last night and, 
and this afternoon trying to figure out to put on points and just not getting to be able to give you some points to stick to them logically and chronologically. Is that all right? Yes. Are we good? Yes. All right. So it says here, round about the seat was 24. Um, elder, they were, uh, elders, they were wearing um, uh, crown. Again, watch this now. Those 24 elders around the throne should not be taken to be literally the number 24. Should not be taken literally to be 24. Because if you take it literally to be 24, now you're going to have to identify who are these 24 individuals. Hello? Are you still here? Remember I said to you that Revelation chapter 4 still pertain to time. Mm -hmm. Are you still here with me? So here is what happened in Revelation chapter 4. God takes John and gives him private information to what is to take place on earth and what is taking place in heaven. All right? When you and I go to the movie, or when you and I sat before the TV watching a show, all we see is what is on the screen. Correct? Sometimes, there are those who are privileged enough to get an opportunity to go backstage and see how the whole production and cast and everything come together. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Okay, so watch this now. John now is taken behind the scene, if you will, and he is privileged to how things are going to unfold on the earth as from heaven perspective. Am I clear? Yes. Am I going to swear enough to get us to understand it? Yes. Okay, so, so basically now, John is given behind the scene access, if you will, because we are going to, uh, not we, the earth is going to be experiencing one thing and they can attribute the thing that they are experiencing to A, B, C, D. John now was privileged to know exactly what's going to be the cause of the things that are happening. Are you still here? And we are privileged now, believers are privileged to know because the God said, write it and reveal it so they understand. It's incredible. So, so he's there. So these 24 now, elders should not be taken for literally 24 individuals. Why? Couple of reasons why. Number one, um, they are elders or they are redeemed individuals. They are redeemed individuals. Because if you continue in the verse down to uh, maybe verse uh, 10 into chapter 5, you're going to hear these same 24 in the individual give glory to God because God redeemed them from out of the earth. To, uh, the Lamb redeemed them back to God the Father himself. Are you still here with me? Okay, so these are these 24 are redeemed individuals. Are you still here? All right, so watch this now. At this particular point here now. So watch this. So fast forward now. Fast forward. So we're going to go ahead now. So John, because basically this now, John was taken um, fast forward into the future. Because this pertains to the future. So watch this now. I need you to understand that at this particular point in heaven and, and, and in time, who will be in heaven? Who will be in heaven? We know for sure that it's not Israel. We know that. We know for sure that it is not Israel. Because people would still be on planet earth and Israel would still not be redeemed as a nation as yet. Right? We know it's not Old Testament um, saints because we don't have the first resurrection yet. Are you still here? We know it's not tribulation saints because the tribulation saints would still be on earth going through their struggles. Are you still here? So it only left us with one group to consider and that would be the church. 
So these 24 elders is a representation of the bride of Christ, of the church, the ecclesia, the entire church. Because, again, and, and I want to linger because, again, I don't know, but I bless God that he considered me and you to be a part of his bride. Hey, hello, somebody. Do you think the bridegroom is going to show up and call somebody else before he calls his bride? Hello. So, in other words, the first set of people, the, the set of people that I believe here, and there are those who will dispute it, but if the set of people who represent these elders here are the elders represent, I believe is the church. Because at this point here, I believe the church, based on how I understand the Bible, the church would have already been raptured. Are you here? So now, so John here now. So let's let's look at the verse. Any question? Any comment? All right, let's continue with the verse here. Where are we? Um, four, right? All right. So one, they're clothed. Watch this also. Look at it. They're clothed in what? In white. White represent purity, the redeemed saints, holiness, and all of that stuff, right? Okay. White raiment and what they had on on their head crowns of gold which are the saints will be crowned with gold uh, also will be wearing um, crowns of gold as well remember that okay and it says that out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thundering and voices and there was seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God all right so the, the, the lightning and thundering here could represent um, the, the wrath of God that is getting ready to be poured out on the earth. I, 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 it, it would not sound like just the regular lightning and thunder that we experience when it's a rain and, and precipitation and all of that stuff there. But this could very well be um, the wrath of God that is going to get ready because everything from this point here, from chapter 4 here, is pointing to the wrath of God coming upon the earth. Are you still here with me, somebody? All right. Here's something else that I want you to look at in the verse as well, too. It says here, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. All right. I need you to examine closely because here is what you find right there. So on the throne, you have, you have a being that was seated on the throne, right? Which seated there could be two things, a manifestation of God the Father, or it could be the Lord Jesus Christ, a manifestation of the second person in the Trinity. Interestingly, John saw a manifestation of the Holy Ghost right there as well. The seven spirits of God is the Holy Ghost in, it, in his completion. So he said seven, he was. So, so the Holy Spirit, watch this now. So we see, I'm going to show you the Trinity by the time we get to the end of this chapter here. So you find right there is that a being is seated on the throne, right? And then now in front of that being who is seated on the throne are what? Are seven lamps of fire, which are the what? The seven spirits of God. Watch this now. The truth, I, 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 I would want to believe that when the church is raptured and we're in heaven, we are not going to see a seven lamps. I don't believe we're going to see a seven lamps before the throne of God right there. Because basically, John is seeing what is going to unfold in the future. 
And what we're seeing here now is the triune God still being manifested in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So we saw one seated on the throne, and then before the throne, what we saw there, we saw seven lamps burning, which are what? The seven Spirit of God. So if that's not the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, then we're going to have to redefine God. Are you still here with me? Because it's one God, eternally manifested Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So if these are the seven spirits of God, so what are we trying to say? God is seven? Are you still here? So the seven there represent completion, our wholeness, our perfection, which now, and the lamps again represent fire, which are, the, the Bible says, are what? The seven spirits of, uh, of God. So we saw the manifestation of the Holy Ghost uh, right there as well. Verse number six. Are you still here? Verse number six. And behold the throne, sorry, and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Okay, we made mention already. So watch this now. Here is John's imagery of where, of what the throne. If you're going to give the throne a physical structure, John is saying that the throne is seated on a flooring or a platform, and that platform appears to be a sea of glass. So watch this now. Watch this. Here's what John is saying. John is saying that where the throne seated... As far as his eyes could see in the realm of the supernatural, everything there just seems like, okay, go down to, where's the sea again? Go down to the Atlantic Ocean, or down to Fort Lauderdale Beach, and look over at the Atlantic Ocean. And as far as your eyes can take you, all you're going to see is just something that's just level and blue, correct? So you see that and, and you know. So John's best description is that what I saw are where the throne was seated is like a sea. There's no literal sea that you swim in water in heaven. So he said his description was like a sea of glass. So and everything crystal clear and as far as his eyes could see, that's what he was looking at. I think um, Exodus, Exodus, let me read for you. Exodus chapter 24, verse 9 and 10. Exodus chapter 24, verse 9 and 10, it says, Moses and Aaron, and Moses and Aaron, Nadad and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Watch this now. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of lipis lazuli as bright blue as the sky. So they, at Mount Sinai, God invited up Moses, Aaron, Nadad, and Abihu, and the 70 elders. God said, come, we're going to have dinner. And when they saw the glory of God or the image of God underneath his feet, again, described was like a sea of glass. Are you still here? So pretty much um, John uses the same expression here to refer to um, God when he's seated in glory underneath his feet. It's like a sea of glass, uh, if you will. Are you still here? Any question? All right. And before, that was what? Verse number six. And we have what? Four bees. Um, four bees full of eyes for be, uh, before. And the, 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 the term bees here might sound somewhat weird. I think a better rendering would be four creatures. But we're going to take the idea of the four bees to the timing. Let's see what... Um, what the NIV said. What verse is that up? Am I? Six. Six. If I can find a verse six here. Okay. Also, 
in front of the throne there was what looked like a sea of uh, okay in the center around the throne were four living creatures so um, the NIV referred to them as creatures if you go to the book of um, Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 2 I, I believe uh, Isaiah is going to refer to them as four living um, thing or four living creature and then at some point he refers to them as seraphim. Uh, we believe that they were either seraphim or cherubim uh, but it is a higher class of angel because there, there are classes of angels that you and I have never heard of just like how there are demons that if it weren't for the book of revelation we would not know that those demons exist some of those demons and i'm coming back i know i'm going ahead of myself but here's something that you gotta understand here's something that you got you gotta understand here's something you gotta understand you see these four living creatures around the, the throne Watch this. Some of those same creature like, I would believe, went with Satan. Are you still here? The Bible said that one third of the angels went with him. It didn't say that no seraphim and no cherubim didn't go with him. It says one third. So, I want to believe and read in Revelation as well will let you know that some of the most powerful angels went with him. And watch this now. Satan himself is, 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 a, is a cherub. He's no ordinary um, demon. And watch this now. In Revelation 17, 18, 19, in that neighborhood, you're going to come across some demons that from the time they fell, they have to be in chain. Hello. Reverend, they're not allowed to roam the atmospheric heaven and to roam the universe. If not, we wouldn't be here. God is all powerful, we know that. But those demons are so vicious that they're kept in chain. Are you here? All right, so where I'm all over the place. I'm excited. See why I couldn't give you notes? I'm excited. This, I, I love this thing here because guess what? It pointed to the end. You're not talking back to me. What verse am I? Okay. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast like a, had a face like a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. So, 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 so John, again, find the best earthly description to give us of what the four um, beasts looks like. Uh, and, 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 and watch this now, watch this now, watch this, watch this. Even, and here's the interesting thing about, here's the interesting thing about um, the vision. Here's the interesting thing about this vision here, what John saw. John described them as four individual um, creatures, right? And it tells you that each of the creature have one look like a lion uh, face, one look like an eagle, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go to Ezekiel now, Ezekiel describe these same creatures, but each one possesses all four characteristics here. Are you still with me? So if you go to Ezekiel 1, what you're going to find is that each of those creatures possesses the, 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 the head, um, the, the four different, uh, as a matter of fact, it's like um, the, the way how Ezekiel saw it is like they were clustered together, like they, they, they had joined together. And so Ezekiel vision now was slightly different. Ezekiel now was, uh, God revealed something different. So Ezekiel, so when they move, they don't turn. They either move in either direction, east, west, north, and south, but they don't turn. So he gives, but he tells you that each one possesses that. So if we look at these um, representation here, and again, 
I like Dr. McCarter's um, thought on it. The first one that uh, it says a lion is that it symbolizes um, power and strength. Um, the second one, the calf, it symbolizes um, servanthood. Um, the third man, it, 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 uh, it symbolizes that these, um, these creatures are rational, that they're rational creatures, that they can um, think of whatever the case might be. And the fourth um, eagle symbolizes that they carry out God's um, orders with swiftness and with speed. That's, um, that's from Dr. John McCarthy. That's how he um, categorized those four um, faces or four features that John expresses um, from the text here. And the four beasts uh, that had, it says here, and the four beasts had each of them six wings. And you remember the six wings in Isaiah? Two they cover their face, two they cover their body, two they what? Okay, all right, y'all remember that. Okay, and it says they had six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not. All right, so they were full of eyes. In other words, they are not omniscient, but what happened is that they are very intelligent. They are very aware, very knowledgeable. The eye represent knowledge. The eye represent being able to see and to know. So the fact that they were full of eyes means that they were very knowledgeable. And anywhere you read about angels in the Bible, their wisdom and their knowledge is, is, is beyond our comprehension. Are you still here? All right? So... And so it says here uh, that they were full of eyes. Uh, okay. With, with them, and, the, and they what? And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Describing the eternity or the eternal um, attribute or aspect of Almighty God. And here again now, you realize that John, watch this now, in heaven there's no night and there's no day. There's no night, there's no day. But for John to comprehend it and for him to communicate it to us, he uses earthly expression that again we can what? Identify with. So he said day and night. So in, in other words, non-stop if you will, 24-7. When we want to describe something as non-stop, we said 24-7s, correct? So it goes on and on and on. And what are they crying? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who knows for how many millions of years uh, they've been doing that? Hello? Hello? I think I'm an evolutionist though because I say how many millions a year, right? Hello. Who knows when God created the, um, the angels? And there you know? And there you know? We only know when man came into existence, right? About 6,000 years ago. Who tells us that, uh, who tell us that an angel were not there created uh, millions a year before? I let you think on that for the time being. All right, it says here, so they were full of eyes that cry, "Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and which is, which was and is and is to come." Verse number nine. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to Him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. So watch this. So it says here, and. When those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. Watch this now, verse 10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast down their, their crowns before the throne, saying, say, I'm going to read it and come back. And say, thou art, what, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were and are created so watch this now so again you see um, here the, 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 the text indicates to us that um, right there in this chapter here there's a manifestation of God the Father who appears as if he appears there on the throne as well but now when it says seated on the throne who is it giving glory to? the Lord Jesus Christ correct? Amen. 
And then we also saw, I believe in verse number 6, where uh, the Holy Spirit, which are represented by the seven um, lamps burning, which the Bible called uh, the seven um, spirits of God. So, right there, and, so, and here we find, and uh, you'll see again, where the elders cast down their, their, their crowns. And we're going to pick up a little bit on it in, in verse number 5 to put it in context so you get a better idea as to who was seated on the throne. So it says, uh, it says when the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that, that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders uh, fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast down their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were and are created let's jump right into into chapter 5 to bring the point home and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book which written uh, written in and on the back side a seal with seven seals. Uh, watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch verse number one of chapter five. Verse number one of chapter five is a manifestation of God the Father. Hello? That lost you all? Okay. So, 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 so again, again, here, here's something that we got to understand. Because we are still in time, and because John were in time, it is important and imperative for God to manifest himself as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. In order for us to appreciate and to understand the work of salvation and the work of the Trinity in salvation, it got to be God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. However, in the book of Exodus uh, and, and, and so on and so forth, what did God tell uh, Israel? Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is what? One. Is one. I don't want to be facetious, but if God told Israel that, mm -hmm. you understand why they reject Jesus? <laughs> Hello. No. If God told Israel that, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Hello. Jesus showed up on the scene and said, I and the Father are one. Hello. Hello, if we didn't have the Bible and we were there and we got the same message that God is one God and Jesus showed up and said, I am God too, we are going to conclude just like the Jews, he's a lunatic. Hello, talk to me. Okay, am I the only one who are rational here? Hello, somebody. Hello. So they could not digest the fact when Jesus come and said, I am the son of God. The truth is, as much as I teach and preach about the Trinity, I know very little about the Trinity. Hello. You think I fully comprehend this thing here? You think I fully comprehend John? We're... John the Baptist is baptizing this man here and a voice, the Bible said, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and a dove um, sat on top of his head. You think I fully comprehend that? Hello? Hello somebody. And, and that's why I'm taking my time to help you to understand what is happening here. Because between chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost is manifested, but are, are seen. But if you don't examine the text closely, you're going to be confused and you're going to miss it. Watch the verse now. And I wish I had half an hour more to teach. But God, I'm loving this thing. <laughs> yes. Watch this now. Look at the verse again. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat 
on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw, uh, uh, let me just read a couple of words. And I saw a, a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And watch this now. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look there. And I'm going to read and come back up. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look there. And and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seal thereof. So, watch this. The Bible didn't say that, or the elder didn't say that the one who holds the seal or the book is the same one who is going to open it. Did you say that? Hello. Yet still, what we are looking at here, Reverend, is one and the same person, but in different manifestation. Are you still here? Hello. Are you still here? Do you know that we do that on earth here too? All right. In some movies, in some movies, you have one person who plays multiple roles. Okay, let me see. Reverend, help me out here. You can help me because I'm not the movie person. I think Parent Trap. Yes. Parent Trap. Mm -hmm. um, what's her name? Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't she the one who plays both girls? Yes. Yeah. And don't you see they communicate? Mm -hmm. And every now and then you see this one and this one is so and so and this one is so and so. But yes, still it is the same person, correct? So man is able to bring out that to their imagination of using one person. And watch this now, watch this now, watch this, watch this now. If the producer didn't tell us in some cases that it is the same person, many of us would have been deceived thinking it's two different characters. Are you here? Yes. Are you here with me? What I'm trying to say here is this, that what John is seeing here at this point here, and it's only going to get deeper. Make sure you have your life jacket and you can swim. Can you coming back to save any of you? So make sure you swim. So watch this now. What we're seeing so far is that, remember now, the scene has shifted from earth to heaven. Correct? And what, what is happening now is that John is flipping or is going back and forth to a different character at the same at the same in the same episode. So he is going back now. He's seen God the Father, he's seen God the Son, and he's seen God the Holy Ghost. Are you here with me? So in this aspect here now, the Bible didn't say it, but verse number one, I want to believe that that was eternity back. Watch this, watch this. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals, and I saw, and okay, so he said, I saw the book. And then he said, there was nobody in heaven or on earth or under the earth qualified to open the book. John said, I went. Watch this now. I want to suggest to you that this could very well be in time past or in eternity past. Why are you saying that, preacher? Because at that present moment, futuristically, that John was looking at, because John was there, and the moment that he was in looking at was a futuristic moment, correct? Are you still here? Did I confuse anybody yet? Jesus Christ has already came to earth, crucified, dead, buried, rose back in heaven. Correct? So John 
would have somewhat have knowledge that somebody is there qualified to open the book. But when John saw the book and at the vantage point where he saw it from, when he examined heaven, are you still here with me? Yeah. When he examined heaven, when he examined earth, when he examined beneath the earth, at that point, at that vantage point, there was no one qualified to open the book. Are you still here? That confused you all? I tell you, I can't stop you now. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, so, what he saw there, I want to suggest to us that it would have been eternity past. Uh, because, again, he said there was no one to open, to take the book and to open the seal. So, watch this now. When, and, and watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. There's not supposed to be any crying in heaven. Hello. Hello. There's not supposed to be any crying in heaven. So watch this now. So the Bible said that one of the elders, one of the elders said to him, don't weep because what? The lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy to open the seal. So now the elder says, John, come back over this side. If you come over this side, you would have realized that somebody had already been qualified and worthy to open the book. I yes, yes. used to hear. Yes. I'm trying to stop. Yes, okay. I'm trying to stop, Reverend, but I'm just loving this thing here. I said, all right, so we're going to try to see if we can learn at verse number two. We're going to try to see if we can stop there. All right? So, let's see. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book. And this book is written within and on the back side of it. It's sealed with seven seal. It's sealed with the seal of perfection. It's sealed with the seal of completion. So, so what John saw then and what the, the elder told him is now uh, is getting ready to happen in the future. Um, this is still yet to unfold in the natural because this verse here is still going to be futuristic in terms of the, the manifestation or, 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 or the reality of what John saw here. So, it says, and I saw a strong angel proclaim with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Watch this. Watch this. Don't you think that by now the angels would have known? And who did he, was he posing the question for just John? Was, was, was that the reason why the question, was it just to benefit John why the question was asked? He said, who is worthy to open this strong angel here um, proclaiming across heaven asking, who is worthy to, to loose uh, the seals thereof? He asked the question. So again, I believe that John is going back and forth between the, the present where he's at now and eternity past. Things that he's seen now. He's seen things that had already occurred in eternity past. And, and you've got to remember this now. Watch this now. Here's something we need to understand. With God, there is no past, present, and future. We use the expression eternity past, eternity present, and eternity future. And the only reason why we use it 
It is to help us to comprehend and to try to quantify. Because you cannot define eternity past. Because it is not something that is movable and measurable. It is something that is consistent and stagnant, if you will. It does not move. So it's not a trillion years gone in eternity. There's no, no barometer to use to measure it to say a trillion years has gone. There's nothing to measure it. So we use the expression to give us a better understanding or comprehension. Are you still here? And so he says there, who is for, and he says, no man was found in heaven or in earth, not underneath the earth. But again, go back to the point here. With God, everything referent is one consistent and continuous present tense. Is one consistent present tense. So again, watch this now. Watch this. Human beings cannot comprehend in this state that we are in. We cannot fully comprehend the God of the universe. He is too awesome. He is too incredible. So in his infinite wisdom, he defines how to pass things down to us so we can understand it and we can absorb it and, and comprehend it and able to relate. Are you here? So, the Bible describes, watch this now, watch this now, watch this now, watch this now. The Bible described Jesus Christ as the lamb that was slain, what? Before the foundation of the world, right? So, if the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, were the angels created at that point? So in other words, before the, this universe here formed, God decided, I'm going to do this and my son, or I'm going to manifest myself in flesh and I'm going to die and redeem that which I'm created. So the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. So John here was given a glimpse as to before the manifestation of the lamb that was slain. So now the angel, the elder brought him back to reality. Uh, and and um, I know I've gone over time. Is it okay? Can I continue? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Okay. No man in heaven or in earth nor under the earth thereof. Watch it. John now, John now said, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, um, neither to look thereon. So John was saying, this thing here, nobody can even as much as look at it. Nobody in the universe was found worthy. And then watch verse number five now. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. All right, now watch this. So, so here's a question now. How did this elder here know about the lion of the tribe of Judah? It wasn't on earth. And redeemed from earth and in glory. See? So that's what the elder said. The elder, so the elder, so the, this elder here now is testifying to John. Watch this now. Interestingly, in, watch this now. Interestingly, John already knew this. Hello. Hello. I just mess up everybody now. I said, interestingly, John already knew this. Because remember that before John left earth, John knew who Jesus Christ was. Are you here with me? Are you here? John has that last knowledge of that. So, John had to be taken to a point where none of what he experienced had already taken place yet. 
We're going to close the book. We're going to close the book. We're going we're to close the book. Because uh, I, uh, this, is, this, is, this is so good. Uh, can we just pick it up at verse 5 next week, God's willing? Is that all right? Oh, God. Anybody have any question? <laughs> Man, I, I'm loving this. From the foundation of the earth, so he was already. So John C. The let me put that in human um, perspective, as you can understand. John already saw the Christ from the from the the, the, the past. I said there was, it was already seen. So when they when he when he was crucified that day, John saw Christ crucified before he saw. Him crucified. I, I don't even know. To no, but but what 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 you saw? Yes, John, yes, remember sir. now, remember, remember. Yes, sir. John, stop him. He is here. He feels it. Yes. Live with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Convince. All the disciples convinced. John is the only one here now that was alive. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, John didn't even tell us if he met Peter or anybody else in heaven. You know what you said? Didn't say that? Elders. But Peter, Paul, all the other apostles have already been dead. Spirit gone unto glory. You notice they didn't come into the picture. Because at this point here, it would have been the glorified raptured church in heaven. At this point here. So what I'm saying um, to us is that John, so, 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 so John get caught in a dilemma. Best way to put it. John get caught in a dilemma. Again, those um, sci-fi movies, right? Somebody left on Earth, gone on a different planet, spend some time, when they come back to Earth, they're confused. And when they left on planet, they're confused. Correct? Okay. John get caught in a dilemma. When John was on Earth, prior to this experience here, he knew who Jesus was, he knew Jesus died, rose again, glorified in heaven. Chapter 1, 2, and 3, he met Jesus again in his glorified state. Yet still, he's now in heaven and a seal and a book was presented and he cried and said, nobody in heaven nor in earth is qualified. So that has to be what he saw there has to be a point before the physical crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Does that make sense now? Because you've got to remember now that John knew who Jesus was. And in the same day that he got transported to heaven supernaturally, he met up with Jesus on the island. Jesus showed up on the island. So he knew. But yet still, he cried his heart out because he said there was nobody in heaven nor on earth. So now he probably seen just the manifestation of God alone seated on the throne. He's not seen the manifestation of the Holy Ghost now. He's not seen the manifestation of the Son now. He's seen God seated on the throne, a book in his hand or a scroll in his hand, and asked the angels, who is going to open this thing here? So when John looked, because John probably um, scored the entire heaven, no angel can open it. We know that. All right, angel, angel can open it. So we know that. So John said, there's absolutely nobody. John said, I can't open it. And he looked through heaven and through the, the universe and there was nobody qualified. So that got to be taken back into, into eternity past, if you will, where this, the reality of Jesus' crucifixion was that it had taken place. All right? All right, here's what I want you to do. Um, Read chapter 5, put your questions together, um, inbox us if you will, 
Write us on, 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 on the church website. Send us an email, visionofhopecog.org. If you have questions, read chapter 5 and 6, and then God's will in our lives are spared. We're going to jump right in next week. And I'm telling you, it's only going to get more excited or exciting, if you will. So please prepare and come. I trust that I've said something tonight that uh, encourages your spirit and reminds you that we're only pilgrim here. We're going home. And this glorious God that we're teaching about and getting excited. Can you imagine? Oh, you are not talking back to me. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. Somebody give him a clap of praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name tonight, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel excitement in my soul. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us tonight. And know we God, we extended uh, beyond our regular Bible study time. But if you know me well, you know that I love the word. And if I get excited, God help us. There's no stopping. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time, almighty God. Certainly it was a great time, God, in your presence. Studying your word and interacting with the people of God. I pray that the, that the anointing that is upon your word with God will just cause your word to grow in the hearts and in the lives of your people, God. So that they can be excited, looking forward. God to the day when you will call us home or you'll rapture your church bless us tonight mighty God and thank you again bless your people as we commit everything and everyone into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray amen, amen. and amen. amen and to my online audience good night and God richly bless you